What's up YouTube? My name is David. And today I'm going to show you seven different techniques on how to sing lower and create lower pitches. Some of these techniques are better suited for choral environments or acoustic applications where you have a great hall or a giant church where you can use a bunch of reverb and echo to make this massive bassy sound. But other techniques are better suited for microphone applications where you can be up close and personal with your microphone. Some of these applications might include acapella singing, live performances, recording sessions, and a number of these techniques are specifically included for beatboxers. After my last video did really well, I caught a lot of attention from vocalists, but I also got a lot of attention from beatboxers alike, for more reason than one. I guess now since I have a lot more beatboxers on my channel, I should appeal to some of you guys as well. So without any further ado, I'm going to get this list started and I hope you enjoy this video. Technique number one, growl. This technique started gaining popularity among acapella singers about five to 10 years ago. Ever since then, it has gained a ton of popularity through YouTube videos and low note compilation videos displaying the likes of Tim Faust, Avi Kaplan, and Jeff Castellucci. Growl notes typically sit in the first octave and have this very breathy, bass heavy sound. This technique is very interesting because it doesn't use your regular vocal folds at all. It only uses your vestibular folds. I have a whole tutorial on this technique talking about mechanics of it and how to practice it and everything. But in short, this technique uses your larger vestibular folds to create a lower frequency much more easily. It is kind of hard on your voice, so don't practice it too much, but if you practice it a bit and get used to it, it can be very useful. Technique number two, subharmonics. Yo. The granddaddy of my YouTube channel, basically. Most of you that follow me know me from my subharmonic tutorial videos, and I thank you all for that. I think my first video has over half a million views now. So that's pretty awesome. The subharmonic technique only uses your regular vocal folds. Please do not confuse this with throat bass. That is a different technique entirely that I will cover later in this video. In order to enter your subharmonic register, so we'll call it, you have to allow your vocal folds to vibrate at two different rates, two different but consistent rates. Let me explain. For the first subharmonic, you need a wavelength ratio that is formed by a perfect fifth. So let's take, for example, a subharmonic D2. We start with a fundamental D3. Then we allow our voice to relax into a certain sort of organized fry. In doing so, one of our vocal folds stays on that D3 while the other vibrates in A3, a fifth above. The result or resultant pitch is a subharmonic pitch one octave below, a D2. This technique is not isolated to vocals. It is used by organists worldwide to create zero octave pitches that aren't on their keyboard at all. Other instruments like tubas and trombones and trumpets can use this technique as well. They're called pedal tones. On the subject of subharmonic singing, that takes us to our third technique, the second subharmonic. There are actually an infinite number of subharmonics. The first, second, third, fourth, Going down, similar to the overtone series, how it's infinite, but different from the overtone series. Overtones are omnipresent. They're always there, always being sounded. But subharmonics have to be activated. You have to allow your vocal folds to vibrate at the correct constant ratios to create different subharmonics. The second subharmonic requires a perfect fourth. I'm mostly showing the second subharmonic technique because I want you to know that there are an infinite number below the first subharmonic that you can sing. You're not just limited to that octave. You get a fifth below on the second subharmonic, a second octave on the third subharmonic, and continuing down below that. Subharmonics are awesome because they're exhaled, they sound similar to octavist low notes if you shape them correctly. I've also heard from many people that they have extended their chest voice bottom end by practicing subharmonics. I'm not sure why, but if it works for you and it's healthy, then go ahead and do it more. The fourth technique, this is throat bass, or cargidera, or Tuvan throat singing, as you might have seen it called on YouTube. 
This technique is completely different from subharmonics, and it is primarily used by beatboxers and tribal vocalists and other traditional vocalists around the world. It is a very harsh, guttural sounding technique that uses both the regular vocal folds in conjunction with your false folds. So it's kind of like a combination of regular singing and the growl technique at the same time. Your regular folds vibrate at a fundamental pitch, while your false folds, the larger folds, vibrate one octave below. I wouldn't recommend this technique for a choral application or an a cappella group setting, but for throat bass and a bass effect in beatboxing and many other sound effect areas, along with tribal vocals, Old Norse music, some Eastern Asian music, this is really cool and really powerful. Because it uses your regular vocal folds and your false folds, it has a lot of volume and a ton of power. At the same time, it uses a lot of muscle and can put a lot of stress on your voice, so be careful with it. I just want to take a second to shout out King's Hawaiian bread because this is prime snack material. Technique number five, inhale singing or aggressive phonation, or as I have been told by the beatboxing community, thank you, inward bass. <laughs> This technique is pretty self-explanatory. You're singing while inhaling. I'm really not sure why it is yet, but this technique allows me and other people to sing ridiculously low. I mean, octaves below what I can normally sing with my regular chest voice while exhaling. This technique is extremely powerful and very loud. I think part of the volume factor of this technique is due to the fact that you're resonating towards a large cavity that can accompany bass tones very well and resonate them very well, your chest. As I've shown in multiple videos in the past, this technique can be very powerful, very loud, and can be used in a choral setting and acoustic applications off mic. On microphone, it's very usable as well because you're creating a super low pitch that you can do pretty much anything with on a microphone. Some consonants and vowel sounds are difficult with this technique, but with practice and practice and practice, you can get good at pretty much anything. So get out there and start inhaling and singing. Technique number six. Lip buzz. This one is also quite self-explanatory. It's different from the other techniques because it's not really a vocal technique, more as a sound effect, most commonly used by beatboxers and vocal percussionists in acapella groups. The lip buzz is literally buzzing your lips to create a pitch. Now your lips are pretty large, so they can vibrate slow pretty easily. So we can create some pretty low pitches using this technique. Also, I've heard this technique used by female acapella groups to create first octave notes that otherwise they wouldn't be able to create. This is a pretty loud and usable technique, especially on microphone that is obviously very easy on your voice since it's not using your voice at all. And that brings us to the last technique, technique number seven, the lip buzz subharmonic. Obviously it's pretty cool and it created a very unique sound, but at the same time as it being a lip buzz, it's a subharmonic as well. The subharmonic is the real kicker here. And this one is exciting for me because it shows off and demonstrates how subharmonic singing is done as well. Some people don't believe that your vocal folds are vibrating at two different rates, but this technique and many others that create subharmonics prove that that's the only way you can create a subharmonic pitch. You need two separate pitches vibrating in close proximity towards each other at a constant rate to create that subharmonic or resultant pitch. In this case, I'm vibrating my lips for the fundamental pitch while singing a fifth higher than that to create the first subharmonic, an octave below what my lips are buzzing. This technique is actually quite difficult to do because of what happens when two pitches like that, a perfect fifth, collide. They create the resultant pitch, which is a separate oscillation from the fundamental. So you're going to notice once you hover around that perfect fifth, your lips are going to start quivering and it's going to be hard to hold that pitch. But if you can stay steady and control your muscles, you get this really cool buzz that you can not only hear, but feel as well. That brings us to the end of the list for now. I hope you all enjoyed this video and got something productive out of it. If not, hopefully it was just entertaining at the very least. If you want more videos like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe and comment below. Give me suggestions. I made this video because people suggested that I compile a list of all the techniques that I know. I actually have some more, especially for higher singing that I would love to show you in the future. Anyways, Follow me on Instagram, message me, let me know what you think and how things are going for you with your vocal techniques. Until next time.